a gay duck. <laughs> and to be a gay duck in the United Arab Emirates. Lauren, please don't downplay that. Welcome to another episode of Yes or No. This is a very special episode because this is the first episode that we've ever had a girl on. This would be my friend Lauren Southern. Lauren, the filmmaker behind American Mirage, coming out soon. Lots of other great projects. Uh, Lauren only recently welcomed back into America. I think previously you were barred from this country. I was, but first I have some horrendous news for you. Okay. I'm legally a man in Canada. Did you just call me a woman? I'm legally a man. Are you? you? Oh, yes. Okay, this is good. <laughs> well, I'm so glad that you reminded me of this because I felt, look, I'm a married man, okay? I, I generally follow the Mike Pence rule. I try not to go drinking with ladies. I just, it's not a, it's not a good look, mm -hmm. okay? Men and women are different, but I am so pleased to be reminded that you are, in fact, And a drinking, man. it's a man's game, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Down to the pub, have some cigars. This yes. is for us men only. You're right, uh, just for us fellas. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for the game? I think so. Okay. I guess so. Uh, yes. Well, because, because I forgot you were a man, I prepared for ladies to go first. Lauren, Australia is somehow even worse than Canada. All right. No, I'm afraid you got that wrong. What? Yeah. Yeah, Australia is not worse than Canada. Because Australia is a prison colony, it's, it's full of really tough, wild old guys, crocodile Dundee, that sort of thing. They've got a much funnier accent. Okay, well, you got yours right. I did. Good. Okay, cheers. I will just drink whenever of course. during the That's game. That's really the way to play. I also think often about how it's hard being a conservative in this world right now and wanting to promote, you know, staying away from the vices. Yeah. How are you supposed to not be an alcoholic when well, things are the state they are? <laughs> that's true. And listen, everything in moderation. I mean, it's almost noontime around. It's almost lunchtime. It's five o'clock somewhere right now. Too true. Too okay. true. Okay. So now I read one. Brunettes are taken more seriously and are more trustworthy than blondes. How would you answer that? Hmm. Oh. I've mixed things up here. You did. You did. I, I'm so generally unobservant, so I hadn't noticed until now you've, you've changed. Not, not only your sex, but your hair color. You got it right. You got it right, too. I know. That's, so neither that's so of us drink? so obvious. I Can I drink anyway? Of course. Wonderful. We, we I like won. This game. Why, we won. Why wouldn't we drink? You have to drink when you lose, mm -hmm. and you get to drink when you win. That's wonderful. the right attitude. It is more likely that Justin Trudeau is the son of Fidel Castro than Joe Biden won a fair election in 2020. This is going to require some very high-level logic. Seriously, it's more likely... That Justin Trudeau is yes, the okay. son of Fidel Castro mm -hmm. than Joe Biden won a fair election. Okay. <laughs> Depends. Okay. Um, hmm. Of course. And I'll say for the record, I actually don't think that Justin is Fidel Castro's son. I know that his mother was an eccentric character. I know that they were friends with the Castros. I know that Justin Trudeau looks exactly like Fidel Castro. I, intellectually, spiritually, and physically. I know that. But, but... I actually see a little bit of his father in him. Yeah, it's a toss-up. It's, it's a fun meme, though. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. I respect the people who uh, are uh, spreading misinformation on the internet. And by the way, at the very least. <laughs> you got to fight misinformation with misinformation. You, of course. No, you do. <laughs> and you, you can pretty much do anything for a meme. But certainly we can say it is much more likely that Fidel Castro is the father of Justin than that. Joe Biden won a fair election. They rigged the whole damn thing. They said, the, the big tech oligarch said you couldn't spread true information about Biden corruption. They changed all the rules in the weeks before the election. They violated the state constitution of Pennsylvania. Yeah, this is what I find 
interesting is to me, it doesn't have to be anything to do with the ballots. Just the state of the media. I saw uh, leftists jumping up and down about Viktor Orban's win in Hungary. And they that were like, terrible, Lauren, this awful, was... awful, autocratic... Yeah, that horrible, horrible man. Of, of Europe, yeah. They said this is an unfair election, Lauren, because they banned, you know, media companies that were opposed to Viktor. They banned all of these, you know, NGOs and everything. And I'm like... So what is it in America when all these right-wing outlets get censored? Was that an unfair election then? All right, if that's the rule, fine. <laughs> right, right. I, I, I loved one time uh, Victor Orban was accused of all the same stuff that anyone to the right of Hillary Clinton gets accused of. You know, you're a, a racist, anti-Semitic, this, that, and the other thing. He goes, why do you, you say I'm anti-Semitic? They, they said, well, because you've criticized George Soros. So, well, if that qualifies you as anti-Semitic, and he said it very plainly, he said, George Soros is a Hungarian and a major political rival of mine who spends a lot of money trying to remove me from power. I think I get to criticize it. I think I get to push back a little. I think the most anti-Semitic thing you can possibly say is that George Soros represents all Jews. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, I've, I've never heard <laughs> Jew hatred any, any worse than, than suggesting. Yeah. What a good point. Should we drink? Oh yeah, again, wonderful. Love that. Should have asked for a double. Homosexuality is more nature than nurture. Hmm. Ooh. Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. You were right. You were wrong. I was wrong. You say it's uh, homosexuality is more nature than nurture. Yeah, I don't know. I think that there's, I find it difficult to think you could indoctrinate a man out of wanting sex with a woman. What if you put him in prison? Yeah, that's environmental for sure. But, but you're saying he would still probably prefer the woman. Yes. Just, yeah. yeah, so that there are men that in a free environment where they could sleep with women, choose to sleep with men instead. I find that very interesting. I think it's also like a sex drive thing. Like men and gay men in particular tend to have like very, very high sex drives. And they're just like, you know what? <laughs> Women aren't going to keep up. So, <laughs> Forget well, that's, about it. <laughs> that is true. I do remember in, in my teenage years, I would sometimes friends would say, ah, oh, if only I had been made a gay man, I would be so much happier. You know, I would have all of my desires fulfilled. The, the reason I say no. Yeah. Is, and that you correctly guessed my answer, is not because I think that people aren't born with a certain uh, attraction or desire or anything like that. You know, s sometimes people will argue that there's no way that there's any biological or genetic or early infant basis for uh, sexual attraction. And I think, well, that's crazy. Why, why not? And they'll say, because God doesn't make mistakes or something. Well, I think you know, people are born with six fingers. I don't know. People are born with all sorts of, this is a fallen world. There are all sorts of peculiarities and eccentricities. But the reason I say that homosexuality is more nurture, really I would say I guess it's more culture, is that there's a difference between having a sexual desire and indulging that sexual desire or creating a sexual identity based on that desire. True. I mean, the very idea of homosexuality is very modern, not because some guys didn't want to shtup other guys in the past, but just the idea that that was a sexual identity. Look back at the ancient Greeks. They were all shtuping each other, but they didn't view themselves as liberace or something like that. There, there seems mm -hmm. to be a, a huge amount of culture here. The idea that, uh, what is it now, more than, uh, greater than one in five Gen Z youth identify as LGBT, up from historically about 1%. Yeah. Either, Alex Jones is right, and there's something in the water, well, or, he is, or but... and, he, and, he's, and he actually was right about the water <laughs> with the frogs. But, but in addition to that, you might say that there's some cultural phenomenon going on here. I agree with that. When it comes to especially the uh, like 72 different genders and pronoun stuff, I think that is absolutely nurture. Yeah. But when it comes to like the actual like sexual stuff that we've the, seen, the desire, the dawn mean. of time, yeah. you know. Uh, that, that to me, there is a nature aspect. It, but it's a really good point because you can take it outside of sex too. I mean, what you're describing is that people have a kind of lower will. They have an appetite, whether it's a natural desire or a desire that has been in, inculcated into us. We have mm -hmm. these things, but then we have a rational will and we can say, well, I actually don't want to do this. You know, I don't want to have the 10th beer. I mean, I do, but or we don't, I don't want to have 
20 more cookies. I have a, I'm going to get a stomach ache, right? You have that higher will, and that's why you can say the things I want to do, I don't do, and the things that I don't want to do, I do. And uh, so leaving aside, even for a moment, the morality of engaging in homosexual behavior, certainly you have to admit there is a social and a cultural uh, aspect to all of that over whether or not you're going to do it in the first place. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Okay. All right, well, we've already gotten you canceled. You've already, Wonderful. you just called every gay guy in America a rapist, I think. Okay, so now... It's not a good show if you don't get a uh, Media Matters article out of it. <laughs> the immigration crisis at the American southern border is more important than Russia invading Ukraine. You were right. I only say that because you're American, though. Mm. So was I right? I'm torn. You should put the drink in the middle. Mm. <laughs> if you stand in the middle of the road, Lauren, you're going to get hit by a truck. I just finished a documentary on uh, the American border crisis, and I think it's extremely important. But obviously, if you're Ukrainian, if you're Russian, that's going to be more important to you. And then the geopolitical fallout, all of that, it's, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. How can America make the argument that Ukraine's borders are sacred if we don't believe in our own borders? Yeah. It's simple enough to me. I'm not saying it's even describing the threats to the world order, although I do think that an America without borders, which is to say an America that's not really a nation, I think that's a huge threat to the, the world order. If we're supposed to be the global hegemon, and we can't even control our own borders. But furthermore, if, if the argument is nations should have their borders respected, big, powerful countries, although frankly, Russia seems less powerful than I think a lot of us believed it would be before the invasion, but big, powerful countries shouldn't invade smaller, weaker countries. Well, how can we make that argument when we won't protect our own borders? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think back to like the old Ben Shapiro debates on TV about gun control and him saying, but we have to, the Second Amendment is for you know, if there's an invading force, it's not for just going to your gun range right. and having fun. It's not for fun. hunting deer. And everyone would just laugh at that and say, when is that going to happen? Right. Because we've got a, you know, 50-year at best memory span, right? And every other nation on earth, especially China, Russia, they're thinking on 100-year timelines, not four-year election mm -hmm. cycles. They're like, okay, we have been shamed. We've had the, that, those years of shame. We're now going to take over the South China Sea. We're going to have this plan we're going to execute for 100 years. We remember invasions. We remember all this. Americans, Canadians, forget about it. You can't do it. And, and by the <laughs> way, we're not even talking about the Guatemalan economic migrant who just wants to make some money for his family. There are... There are terrorists who are arrested trying to cross into our border. There are foreign nationals who are up to all sorts of problems who, who are apprehended and sometimes not apprehended coming into our country. When I was uh, on the Reynosa border right across from McAllen, Texas, they've got a country club on the other side. And I guess the U.S. government couldn't buy the space to put the border wall, so the border wall just stops, and then it's just country club. And mm. every night there, they've got people going over in boats. We were flying our drone over, and there's boats across the whole shore. And in the abandoned buildings where migrants will wait before they go to this Texan country club, there's spray paint of 18th Street gang all over them. And that's an El Salvadorian competitor gang to MS-13. Mm. And I'm like, they're not spray painting this because they own this territory. They're spray painting it before they go into America, most yeah. likely successfully. And like, I witnessed that with my own eyes. You've got gang members from El Salvador every day making their way through Mexico up into the U.S. It's not usually what you think of when you think of a country club. You usually think of guys wearing, you know, gold button blazers here instead of shuffling MS-13 gang-banging psychos into America. But yeah, yeah. That's a scary situation. Absolutely. Worthwhile to drink, even yeah. though we both guessed right. The Canadian government hates Christians more than it hates Muslim extremists. I'm going to do a soft slide mm. so I don't spill again. All sure. right. Somehow you did spill on it. I don't know how. It doesn't make any sense. It's rigged, all right? It's, ri it's rigged. It's rigged. Uh, you're correct. Yeah, as are you. It goes without saying. It's not. I, did you ever watch that Norm MacDonald episode yes. where he interviews the girl about 9-11 and she says the unfortunate thing about 9-11 was all the hate that it caused against Muslims? I feel like that's kind of the Canadian government's response to the issue, mm -hmm. whereas they see like the church burnings that happened over last summer, yeah. you know, like 50 churches, more than that, vandalized, attacked, burnt to the ground. On, and, on BS. Yeah, on, on BS grounds. And they put out a little statement, ooh, that's not so good, and ignore it. We know that if that were mosques, mm -hmm, of they'd course. be just, uh, you know, Trudeau would be doing a tour across the country. Yeah. No, there's, there is no question. The worst part about 
Canadian leftists burning down dozens and dozens of churches is the potential blowback. Okay. <laughs> Precisely, yeah. Michael. Mm-hmm. Precisely. All right, well, good. Well done. Cheers. Cheers. I'm actually into the idea of the metaverse. Yeah, no, I know I'm a normal person. I, I want to live in a world created by God, not a world created by some weird reptilian named Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll pass on that one. I played enough Second Life in high school mm-hmm. to know that. Yeah. Hey, you <laughs> not know, a big fan. <laughs> yeah, you know this like beautiful, glorious creation with waterfalls and love and joy and hope. What if you just live in Sims all the time? <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun, right? That sounds Some great. Some people would pick that though. Yeah. That's that's how sad and miserable things are getting. Plus, you in the metaverse, you don't even get legs. Did you know that? You don't get legs. No, they got rid of <laughs> they got rid of legs. Actually, any, everything below your navel because I, this is not a joke. There was too much groping going on in the metaverse. In the beta testing, they, people kept groping. And so they got rid of their legs and loins and everything, And uh, but there was still kind of groping. So now there's a, a six-foot virtual barrier between all the characters. <laughs> My safe space. Yeah. Can't grope me if I don't have a body. Mm, the patriarchy <laughs> always finds a way. Okay. <laughs> Using the term MAGA, if you're not American, is a very offensive and harmful form of cultural appropriation. <laughs> So true. Mm. So true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm going to say actually, no. It's not cultural appropriation. <gasps> because whether you like it or not, America is the global empire. It, it runs the entire world, and there's nothing even close. The, not Russian, inv- the, the Russian invasion <laughs> of Ukraine, it totally proves this. Everyone thought, oh, okay, you know, Russia, it's this really strong... Form, it was recently a superpower. No, it's nothing. It's, there's nothing even close. There's America, which has all the guns and all the weapons and all the power and everything. And then there's everyone else below the table. I can't even find everyone else here. It's, the asymmetries are so crazy. And so I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. But it's the way it is. And so in a sense, we're all living in the American empire. I love America, but I think you're, you're doing the American thing where you overestimate your country, unfortunately. China... Yeah. Russia, they're playing the long game. No, they, I'm not saying... All they have to do is wait to win. Yes, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not even <laughs> disputing that. I'm not saying that America's going to remain that way forever. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Yeah. But right now, today, we're all American. All right, all right. I'll well, I will though... happily culturally appropriate then, now that I've uh, been given the mega pass. <laughs> <laughs> I believe also, you're wait, that's a bit contradictory in itself. To say, make America great again, but our country is already the greatest. Mm. Got him. Mate, wow, got him. <laughs> got him. <laughs> you, it's like, you, yeah, you're right. It's, could you be, you could be very, very powerful, but not great. Mm-hmm. Right, in the sense that you, at the height of Roman decadence, at the height of just vicious, debauched Roman decadence, it was... It was the world empire, but was it great in a moral sense? Probably not. Got him back spiritually. (laughs) Australia during COVID is basically Afghanistan without Abrahamic religion and a full body version of masks. (laughs) Australia during COVID is basically Afghanistan without Abrahamic religion and a full body version of masks. I mean, Uh, yes, I, I guess the concept, right? Like, I was told by the government when I could and couldn't leave my house, uh, anywhere I went had to be tracked by, uh, you know, the government, which is clearly run by the patriarchy and men, so I had to have tabs on myself by men constantly. Mm-hmm. Everyone had apps on their phone. Whenever you went into a store, even an Uber, you had to scan the app, and it would literally have a list of locations you had been all day, all month, wherever. Um, and that would be sent off into a government database. Think about how valuable that data is. That is so spooky. You can know where every 30-year-old woman is at 4 p.m. on a Tuesday afternoon in Australia. Wow. That is like extremely powerful levels of that data. Is, that is. I, I would have to say you got it wrong. Oh, okay. Be- because, well, one, because uh, the Western liberal establishment has been able to successfully occupy Australia, unlike Afghanistan, which it completely botched oh, for true. 20 years. That'd be one thing. And also because Afghanistan 
has heroin. You know, they've got very valuable opium. At least so, they've got heroin. They've got something. They've, <laughs> they've got a very valuable export. Australia these days, I don't even know what they're exporting. It's been 30 years since Crocodile Dundee. What do they have? Outback Steakhouse is their biggest export, and we own that. So true, so true. You're Over stuck in your house and you don't even have heroin. I know. Or a Bloomin' Onion. Horrendous. Mm -hmm. Oh, Bloomin' Onion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. A trans man, this is, I guess, personal. A trans man dating a trans woman is just a straight couple with extra steps. <laughs> I think by definition. Yeah, well, I know um, they just came out with recent research that showed Oh, it's like ridiculously low, like somewhere between one, only one to 10% of transgender people actually are meaningfully transgender. In fact, I think it's the 1% in that they actually get surgery to change oh, yeah. anything at all. So technically, the majority of people that identify as transgender would still have the original parts. You know, I'm actually, as you say that, I'm going to change my answer. Okay, let's see this. I've just had an epiphany in real time because... Uh -oh. Yeah, you, you know, sure, technically, it's still a dude and a chick, even though, but the very fact that they're pretending that the dude is the chick and the chick is the dude would seem to me to suggest it's not the same thing as a straight couple, because I know this is very politically incorrect. I think men and women have different roles in marriage. Now we use this stupid word relationship. You know, I'm in a relationship, like you're, I'm, I'm in a partnership, like you're starting an accounting firm or something. But no, when you're in a marriage, husbands and wives do different things different roles, different, just kind of different categories. And so if you've got the dude pretending to be the chick and the chick pretending to be the dude, it's not just the same thing as a straight couple. It's kind of the opposite of a straight couple. Yeah, reverse. But I guess it, like you're talking about a traditional straight couple because the modern straight couple, they do do switcheroos you're all right. the time, you know, like the stay-at-home husband. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. So. That, you, no, you make a good point. Even the very concept of straight like the idea that you need this separate category for straight, you're right. Okay, I changed my I changed my answer back. You're right, Lauren. You convinced me again. You've brought Wonderful. me back from the brink. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, All right, up. is it me? You're up. A form of pedophilia will be added to LGBTQ plus will be added to the LGBTQ plus cause and be in the process of being normalized before the 2024 presidential election. It's because of the and. It's not going to, it's not, it, it is in the process of being normalized. You're seeing professors now c come out and say, we shouldn't use the word pedophilia. That's, that's stigmatized. We should say minor attracted person mm -hmm. should push this. Uh, but I, they're not going to do it before 2024. And they're, they're probably not going to add it to the initialism just because it's bad optics, right? It's bad PR. Yeah, that, that's the only reason I said no as well is I think, what is it? Yeah, 2024 is too soon. Give them another 10 years. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I saw a meme recently that was saying, if gay marriage gets legalized, what is going to happen? And then it just has a big bar graph that says, gay people will be happy. And below it has a bunch of other options that's like, disease will spread across the world. The terrorists will win. You know, the election. Pedophilia will be normal. Uh, Russia will invade. And then it's like, but all of the options below did actually eventually yeah. happen. Jokes aside, and there, gay there people still been... aren't happy. <laughs> you know, it's a fallen world, man. None of us is ever. You know, true, you're not gonna, true. If you make your identity just about who you stop, you're not going to have a great life. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the slippery slope has been very real, though. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that I think everyone can at least give conservatives. The slippery slope is not a fallacy. No, no. The slippery slope. The, the only thing that's fallacious about the slippery slope is you never seem to get to the bottom of it. You, every time you think, I'm at the bottom, I cannot, we, we are now talking about grooming five-year-olds and talking about, you know, pumping them full of cross-sex hormones. There's no way we can, oh, no, I'm somehow going down even further, and they're going to normalize. Yeah, what is that, is that quote? It's, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel is another train. <laughs> Wonderful. American politics, probably, probably true. Women with a high body count are more... <laughs> He's just referring to certain romantic relationships. Women with a high body count are more miserable later in life. Yeah, I, I guess I agree. It, with, what, with one caveat. People can commit all sorts of terrible things, you know. When I was young and irresponsible, I was young and irresponsible. And they can turn their lives around. They can actually change mm -hmm. their minds. They can repent. They can go live a way better life. Joy is available to them. Ultimate salvation is available to them. But it is true 
that e- even all of that notwithstanding, you are probably going to regret your, well, you're going to regret it. You're going to have those pangs. I mean, that is, there is a temporal effect of all sorts of sin. Mm-hmm. But the, the only reason I'm hung up here is on Easter, Christians always say, oh, happy fault that one for me so great, so glorious a redeemer, that we actually celebrate the fall of mankind and the, the original sin in the Garden of Eden because we get the, the redeemer. We get a salvation out of that even though it was a problem to do it in the first place. So you could see a world, and I, I know people like this, who say, man, I lived a debauched, terrible, disgusting, degenerate life. But hey, it brought me to God. I wouldn't be here today if I hadn't done that. So I'm kind of, I'm really torn. I'm really torn on that. Yeah, logically speaking, I mean, it, doesn't it just seem reasonable that if you find the person you love and want to spend the rest of your life with them and that's the person you sleep with and you don't have to go through like 10,000 failed relationships and experiences that you'll necessarily be more happy? Also, you know, sex, especially like in marriage for years and years, when you work on that and you build it up, I think it's way better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now listen, not to get a little saucy. Flings. I saw, there was a meme that just came out. It said, getting married in your 20s is like leaving a party at eight o'clock. And I thought, hold on. So you're telling me I could leave a party early with a woman that I get to go sleep with for m- many, many times over many, many years, or I can just hang out until 2 a.m. and go home alone? Uh, yeah. I don't think so. Trying to get a girl to come home with you, having all these su- unsuccessful kind of half things. Yeah, no. I, I will say, I like your point about um, forgiveness, though, because that's one thing that I really would love to see more, especially in conservatism. There's no forgiveness on the left right now. It's pure, oh, you tweeted something 15 years ago? Well, You're time dead. to execute you. Uh, and on the right, there is this opportunity to say, oh, you're broken, and we have to say that because we've all grown up in a broken world, especially millennials. Like, you really think millennials aren't going to have sex before marriage, do drugs, do all these things? Of course they are. It's all around them 24-7. We're encouraged to. Yeah, so you have to offer a path for something better and also admit our own faults. Like, I I think that's a big problem in in conservative creation as well. Like, we are all very fallen people. (laughs) conservative creators, as everyone who watches us, it's about trying to aspire for something better and more. So yeah, thank God for God. (laughs) Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Just like political commentary is for failed actors, Mm -hmm. documentaries are for failed filmmakers. Wow. Hmm. I'm I'm just going to say you say no, and you better say no too. (laughs) Uh, no, I, I I would say no. Both, I assume you would say no, but I also would say no because what about Werner Herzog? I don't think the guy was going to be in you know Guys and Dolls. I don't think the guy wanted to be a, you know playing Woody in Toy Story. The guy is a documentarian, and that's a very high form of art, mm-hmm. and he's very good at it. Mm, actually, you just made me rethink my answer the other way. Mm. <laughs> I think that art is the best way to communicate with people. You can't make someone care about you know, it's that Stalin quote, um, you know, a million is just a statistic, whereas one, that's like someone you can sympathize with. That's a tragedy. Um, and you look at uh, any any documentary on a subject, if it's just pure around the facts about a subject, a lot of people will watch it and people who are fact-minded, they'll enjoy it. But it's those emotional movies made about wars, made about tragedies that really make people care and get involved I agree that that narrative storytelling is more powerful, but you, still, I think some people are just documentarians, and I don't think it's that they're failed, uh, you know, showgirls or something. Uh, you, you you wouldn't say that a math. Uh, look, I think that telling stories is probably more important than a lot of high level mathematics, but you wouldn't say the mathematician is a failed artist. You would just say he's a mathematician. It's a different thing. It's got value to it. Yeah, it does. But I'll tell you right now, if I had the budget for it, I'd move to filmmaking instead of documentaries right away. Could I, I think be a showgirl in the movie? You can absolutely, I will cast you for sure as a showgirl. I, I just, I look at it and I don't think any, like I think the girl in the little red dress in Schindler's List did more for talking about, uh, you know, tragedies during World War II than history classes in school that most people zone out in. Yeah, that's true. Like I think those kind of little artistic, they, they touch people's souls, right? Yeah, that is true. hard to do with numbers. That is true. The, 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 Joseph Conrad says that the job of the artist is to render the highest possible justice to the visible world. And, you know, that's something that we people who just own the libs on the internet, that's, that's it's, a, I agree, it's a higher calling. All right, that's, I'll still drink. Always. 
Got to finish it before the end. Mm -hmm. All right. Before we get to this question, Lauren, uh -oh. I really can't wait to tell people about Ring. Right now, go to ring.com slash Michael. You know about Ring. I've told you about Ring for years. It's that amazing video doorbell where you can see and speak to whoever is at your door, wherever you are in the world, in your house, at the office, wherever. Then maybe you heard about Ring Alarm. Ring Alarm is great. You get to keep track of your whole home, protect it not just from the bad guys, but from freeze, from fire. Well, what if I told you that you could go pro. That's right, you can get Ring Alarm Pro, and that way you are not just protecting your physical home, but you're protecting your digital home too. Think about how much time we spend in the digital virtual world. So that's great, you're protecting your door and your windows, but what about your data? Well, with Ring Alarm Pro, you can also protect your Wi-Fi. You can also protect all of the, those inf digital information that are going all around your home. So make sure you go right now to ring.com slash Michael. That's M-I-C-H-A-E-L with a Ring Protect Pro subscription, which is an amazing deal. You get that professional monitoring, ultimate peace of mind. That is ring.com slash Michael. M-I-C-H-A-E-L. All right, picking back up the game. I am legally banned from the United Kingdom. <laughs> uh, Very funny. You really got me with that one. <laughs> you got it right. I'm allowed into the United Kingdom. Wow, that's so I, cool. You're allowed you, into that trash country. Yeah. Congratulations, Michael. Have fun drinking and watching footy into oblivion <laughs> while your country's destroyed. <laughs> who, who banned you? It wasn't the queen. It was the queen herself, it actually. She yes. came down and told me, how dare you, Lauren? She's, <laughs> she's a tough old German lady. You know, she is. I think I like I'm one of the only women in the world to be arrested for terrorism, though. So that's very feminist mm. of me, in my opinion. That, that's, that's true. You're, you're breaking the glass ceiling. I'm a trailblazer, you are, truly. You are. Okay, well, to that, who needs it? Who, who needs, needs those lines, anyway? Yeah. Okay. You're up. Not believing in Jesus Christ is the main cause of people turning into total libs. Ooh. No, I, it, it is. <laughs> it, it is. It's just as simple as that. Because it, it, all, it all really comes out of the French Revolution. And the French Revolution was a rejection of Christ and his church. And the Enlightenment Project broadly was a rejection of Christ and his church. And that is the beginning of liberalism. So it is in a, in a very literal way. It is. Wait, but do, do Protestants not believe in Jesus Christ? No, they do. But, but if they're the cause. Well, some do. Some do. <laughs> not all do. Some reject the I, I, I happen yeah. to agree with you. You know, the, yeah. the Reformation led to the complete uh, um, questioning of any sort of structure and definition. Suddenly of, you can go into your own little closet and decide what you want anything to be. There doesn't have to be an authority or anything to tell you, which good and bad aspects to that, but uh, definitely led us down an interesting path. Um, but yeah, still, a lot of a lot of Protestants, Episcopalians, you know, you've got a lot of denominations. You, so some... are, you, are you blaming the Protestants for the French Revolution? Because <laughs> I might, but I didn't think a Protestant. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, there's a lot of liberal Protestants that believe in Jesus Christ. No, there, there are, there are. I mean, they're the lib cats to the liberal Catholics, for those who aren't up on the lingo. <laughs> uh, they are too. But again, I do think a lot of that, I mean, uh, modernity begins with the Protestant Revolution. There's no question about mm -hmm. that. Uh, and the Protestant Revolution does play into aspects of the French Revolution. There's no question about that. The French Revolution is where we get the terms left and right, even, right? The right were the people who supported the monarchy, and the left were the big libs. And so there's, there's no question about all of that, and there's a very interesting conversation to be had about the role of Mr. Luther in, in all of these things. But I think at a very basic level, when we talk about liberalism, lowercase l, capital L, leftism, progressivism, all of it, it does appear to all have come out of a rejection of the authority of the church and Christianity. Yeah, of course, there has to be some structure when you believe in Christianity, but did God himself not give us freedom to eat of the tree? Well, there was <laughs> a punishment. I mean, he, yeah. did, he didn't, right? He said, don't do it. And then we had this free will. Yeah, and yeah, it really, yeah. it really uh, we probably shouldn't, shouldn't have used it, except that that happy fault gave to us so great, so glorious a redeemer. Yeah. Now, it's even further complicated because this 
mucky soup of liberalism that we all just find ourselves mired in has colored, as you point out very insightfully, the way that Christians even view themselves. Yeah. Christians have become very liberal in many ways, which is a very sad thing. I wouldn't even say that. So, like, Christianity does mimic aspects of you have personal freedom. So there's aspects of liberalism. You have that personal freedom. So the problem isn't the personal freedom itself. It's the choices we're making with said personal freedom. Spoken like a true Protestant. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. All right. Getting married and being a mother is the highest good for a woman and should be the priority in life. <laughs> the, the only reason I say no, the only reason I say no is I think not everyone is called to be married, not everyone is called to motherhood. Some people are, are physically incapable of becoming mothers. I'm not just talking about men who think that they're women, but women too. Uh, but religious life is a high calling. Now people laugh about it. You say, what, you want me to become a nun? Well, yeah, some of the greatest people mm -hmm. in history have been nuns and had consecrated religious life. But, but generally, for the vast majority of women, I would say yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm a no as well. There are people that uh, I know where I'm like, you, <laughs> you shouldn't be a mother. And I don't say that because they're bad people, but they just don't have that nurturing aspect to them. And I think that you're much better off having parents that want to be parents and are deliberate about it and are like, I, mm. like that is my calling. I am a mother. I want to have kids. I want to love them and care for them. Then, you know, push people into it that won't be great parents. Because I think the, you know, obviously the catastrophic uh, destruction of our family today and, you know, marriages falling apart, all of that has been one of the greatest evils and one of the greatest scourges on our civilization. It all starts with that minute factor, not these big, you know, big picture questions we're always talking about. So definitely a no for me. Is there a thought though with the, because I know exactly the type of young lady you're talking about, or you think, <laughs> oh, you're probably not going to be the most nurturing. But is there a thought of sort of, well, just jump into the deep end, you know, and just, just do it and that will transform you and your character? Yeah, I mean, I think that does happen for some people, but there's also the question of, do you really want to take that chance with the child's with the life? Kid. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Like, would you want your parents to be, well, we'll see if it works out. Yeah. We'll I see. mean, I'd be alive at least. But yes, it could be, it's a very fraught prospect. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Okay, I'll drink very that. intentional. I'll drink to that. It is more dangerous to be a white farmer in South Africa than a gay duck who wrote these than a gay duck visiting the United Arab Emirates? A gay duck. <laughs> hmm. There were some years ago, there were gay penguins in the Central Park Zoo. Maybe I think that. Is they mean to write, dude. <laughs> a gay, I don't, I'm gonna, gay duck. I'm sorry, mm. we shouldn't be joking because it's actually really horrible to be a white farmer in South Africa. Like, it's it's horrendous. And to be a gay duck in the United Arab Emirates. Lauren, please don't downplay that. Okay, I'm going to have so some true, editorial Michael. control here so and true. say it's a gay dude. So it's more dangerous being a white farmer in South Africa. The gay duck for me. You got banned for The gay duck for What me? is this guy talking? Can I get a new producer, please? This guy when knows can I have my a new history producer? way better than I do. Wow. I think I may posted a meme like three years ago of a duck getting hanged in the United Arab Emirates. That's so. weird to follow those memes that closely. Okay, all right, the producers say it's done. Um, you got to move mine. Losing it here. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Most people in the United Arab Emirates are secretly gay anyway. You know, one time, I was at, <laughs> this is true, I was at a, a nightclub in, in Dubai. And I'm there, and a lot of people coming over from Abu Dhabi or Sharjah or wherever, or Saudi Arabia. And I met, first of all, all their names were Mo, like yeah, Muhammad, yeah. but they didn't want to say Muhammad because I'm Western. So they said, ah, I'm Mo. And uh, they were all gay guys. They were all gay guys just living it up in, in Dubai. Have you ever heard this quote? It's uh, from, from that region, but they'll say, women are for children, boys are for pleasure. It's, that's like genuinely a belief system. In, in the Afghan some National Army. Yeah. You remember the Afghan National Army, which 
briefly existed, now exists no more. There was this big problem of pederasty. And Mm -hmm. one of the lines that was reported to the uh, Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction was, what do you want me, I'll clean it up a little bit. What do you want me to do if I can't sleep with little boys? What am I supposed to sleep with, my grandmother? It was a line actually reported to the government. So, yes, also because the gay, the gay ducks can kind of maybe suppress it, keep it in check while they're in UAE. But uh, the white farmers, you know, unless they're going to pull a Justin Trudeau, which has its own politically incorrect implications, uh, they're not able to hide who they are. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay, I'll drink to that. True. Okay. Justin Trudeau is just ahead of the curve. <laughs> <laughs> the jab is fake and is more likely just a mark of the beast mechanism for tracking people's movements, controlling population growth, and possibly giving 5G than actually preventing people from getting sick. Due to YouTube rules, oh, this is very important. Due to YouTube rules, make your guess and Hello, do not. Hello, Susan Wojcicki. Do How not, are you? Do not verbally <laughs> confirm if any other person guessed correctly. Give only a non-verbal, ambiguous gesture. So you're just saying you're just guessing for the other person whether you believe. That well, the, no, Susan has already guessed for us. Has she? No, but Susan has already. Decided. We don't. Yeah, I. <laughs> Susan, please don't take me down. I, give, give a non-verbal yeah, blink I would, if you're being held hostage. Because we would never say that the jab is obviously fake, and I can't even get through it. They're going to kick it. They're going to ruin my career. I can't. The jab is, of course, not a mark of the beast, and it is definitely not a mechanism for tracking people's movements or controlling population growth. Certainly not. <laughs> okay. All right. Drink to that. Drink to our last YouTube video. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I've not seen borderless, crossfire, farmlands, or American Mirage. (laughs) (laughs) I hate you. (laughs) I assume you've seen it. Uh, No, I've not seen my own Oh, no, actually. I uh, had a stand in. Hold on. It's not, I have not seen either or. American Mirage isn't out yet. That's what I'm saying, but I I saw the other one. Okay, Your first one, I interviewed you about the other one. Farmlands, yeah. Farmlands, yeah. Okay, yeah. Wonderful. How about that? All right. About that, guys. You thought you had, you thought you had one on me, but you don't. Because it was an or. Okay. Ooh. The biggest issue with the legacy media is that... Can I pause there? I don't like that term. It makes legacy, them sound cool. Yeah. Legacy is cool. I want a legacy. I, pr- I much prefer establishment media, lib media, crooked, <laughs> awful, disgusting, degenerate media. But I, legacy is a cool word. Anyway, that's a digression. The biggest issue with the legacy... Uh, I'm going to edit. The lib media, Yes, right? th- thank you very much. <laughs> thank you for interpreting that. Is that it's controlled and influenced by a group of people who are demographically small, yet vastly overrepresented in the media. Where the hell is this going? Oh, hold on, hold on. No, before you, no, wait. Blue Jack Twitter leftists. Okay. All right. I thought we were having a little bit of a... I thought we were having a little David Duke on the staff over here, but we don't. He's talking about how the libs, the blue check Twitter leftists, control the establishment media. Is that, that's the biggest issue with the media. No, are you drunk? I, that's not, uh, I'm going to change my, it's not, that's not the biggest issue. What? No, it's not, it's not, the biggest issue with the lib media is not that it's controlled by the small handful of the blue checks and whatever. It's that they're wrong about everything. Like it. Yeah, but I, that's I, why they're wrong I about everything. I know it's related. No, they seem They are related. completely out of touch. Yes. Coastal elites that know nothing about the average person. Their yeah. experience of the I real agree. world all comes from textbooks. I from, totally agree. My point is, though, the media are always going to be controlled by some elite. There's no such thing as a democratic media where, where every man has his own news channel. So it's always going to be some elite, some small group of people. That's fine by me. I just want them to be a good elite. I'm actually kind of pro-elite if the elite oh. aren't just disgusting dirtbags like they are today. So you like your hierarchy, how very conservative and Catholic I know, I tell you, you know, it's a bit Catholic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want it to be, I want it to be a good, a good elite. I want good oppression. That's what my, my dad always told me. He was like, Lauren, this is not a democracy when I was growing up. This is a benevolent dictatorship. (laughs) Uh, But right now we're living in a malevolent dictatorship. Yes. That's right. And the the family, the family is not a democracy. The kingdom of heaven is not a democracy. Yeah. So the media is never going to be a democracy. I just don't want it to be so damn malevolent. 
Is that too much true. to ask? It probably so is. So if we can just have correct, horrible, rich elites, that would be great. Yeah, like, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know not, not all rich people are bad, just most of them. <laughs> okay. I actually know what the phrase, the New World Order, means. <laughs> You go first. Yeah, I mean, go for it. We are, Susan's already going to kick us off anyway. I mean, it's a group of elites with interests that are generally opposed to the average working class individual and uh, generally want to acquire more power for themselves and have a lot of control over the banks, our media, our politics, well, government, it's, it's souls. Been, it's been true since the beginning of the world. This is the funny thing. I mean, people go back, they say, it, George H.W. Bush used the phrase in a presidential address. Okay. Or so-and-so, or this guy, or whatever said this. It, it goes back, as Whitaker Chambers says, to the Garden of Eden, when the serpent in the garden tells Eve, ye shall be as gods, right? The, the idea of the new world order. Uh, which really comes into fashion in modernity, in the in the uh, in light, post enlightenment, is this idea that we're going to upend every tradition that we ever had, every stable social institution, every country, every all. We're just going to upend all of it, and through our unfettered reason, we're going to create this utopia on earth, and we're, and we're going to do it. It's not going to be very democratic the way we do it. We're going to shut you down and take away your traditions and turn your boys into girls and your girls into boys. We're going to do, but it's. The yeah. thing about the new world order is that it's all, the past is always evil, the present is always a crisis, and the future is always going to be great. Just give us a little bit more power. This time we'll get it right. This time, we'll this get it time right. we've got it. We swear, yeah. Yeah, that's to, yeah. The, uh, to the old order. To the old order. I love that. All right. This is me. I think so. Being a man has helped my career. <laughs> Dare I ask why you would say no? For me? I think that there is an assumption from a lot of, definitely people on the right, that uh, being a woman will further your career just by virtue of being hot, if, mm. which isn't always the case for being a woman, by the way, so that's an assumption. Mm -hmm. And um, also just by being rare, the scarcity in the right wing. So because you are a right wing commentator, you might assume that uh, being a woman and being more scarce as a right wing because commentator would assist. Women might are probably as represented among conservatives as men, but among Commentators. Commentators, they're, they're much rarer. Correct. Uh, that's a good point. That's true. That's true. Listen, I, I'm of Italian extraction, okay? <laughs> I am a very traditional guy. I like to think that whatever charms I may possess, they, they're more of a masculine aspect, okay? I don't know. I'm not, I, don't know I, I wouldn't know how to be a woman. And furthermore, if I were... Uh, a lady, I, would I be doing all of this? Would I be putting myself through this rigmarole, this, mon this, this monstrous sort of life day by day in and day out, miring myself in the muck and the yuck of the liberal madness and going out? And, no, I probably would. I'd find a rich guy. I'd find a rich hunk and I would batten down the hatches and I'd have a good life. Yeah. So I guess you're right. It hasn't helped my career. I'd have a, I'd have a much better career if I were a lady. Uh, turning into a man was absolutely helpful to my career. Mm. That video did great. On an unironic level, though, there are two. There is the fast track if you are a woman that you can choose, where you can sleep your way to the top. Like that is an option yeah, for there women. There is. That's totally. You real. can you can do that. But there's the uh, other side where if you choose not to, it will genuinely hurt you. Mm. Like. Mm. A lot of people do not take rejection well, and they will get you back for that as a woman. And, uh, you know, I can legitimately say I have lost opportunities for rejecting guys. I, I didn't want to press too much, to, but <laughs> so you've experienced this. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. And I don't want to like, ah, oh. feminists have made it so hard to talk about any legitimate. Like, you know, what's his name? What's his, what's his phone number? Where do I get him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do I dox him? And then they also complain about like, oh, like a guy like vaguely flirted with me. Like that's rape or whatever. It's just made it impossible to talk about genuine problems in this. But like, yeah, if you if you reject a guy, or it, may, it probably happens the other way around too with women. Like that jilted reaction, especially amongst highly narcissistic personalities, can oh be disastrous. Hell hath no fury. Hell hath no fury. Like a narcissist scorn. <laughs> exactly. So I would say that there, there are benefits and there are absolutely women that can use that to their advantage. But if you don't know how to use that and you aren't someone who wants to take advantage of that, then they're, they're, every, every, everything comes with the flip side, this right? That's true. I, I would genuinely, if, uh, I, I would genuinely um, going and filming my documentaries, I would prefer to be a man while doing that, just for safety reasons Yeah, as running well. around South Africa. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's probably a better idea to be a fella. And then you get imposter syndrome, too, because mm -hmm. it's like, oh, it, uh, you know, do people actually like it? Is it actually a good documentary, mm -hmm. or is it just because I'm a woman? I know. This is what I, that's what I always ask myself. I said, do people really <laughs> like my commentary, or is it just because I'm sexy? It's so, it's is it so just because I'm hot, hot to trot? It's you know? so hard to be you. <laughs> it is hard. I, I, I did, I did find this in Hollywood though. I would go, I'd, I'd walk in, you know, to the big lots, knock on, knock on Mr. Weinstein's door. I say, Mr. Weinstein, I'm yours. <laughs> Dude, I'm here. I'm here to be a big star, and I don't know. Then the door would slam in my face. <laughs> I'm really sorry that that happened to you. I know. I guess part. it's probably better. It's probably good that the guy's behind bars now. Probably. It's probably good. <laughs> but I don't know if it helped my career. I'm, I'm really sorry that that happened to you. Truly, his rejection of you is the real crime. Yes. No, <laughs> <laughs> On that note, Lauren, uh, one last drink. Cheers. One last drink. Cheers. This was great. Thank you. To your health. There's someone that you would like to see me play the game with. Again, it has to be a man. I'm glad we didn't break my rule. Uh, please leave it in the comments. We'll see you next time on Yes or No.